Okay, greetings. We're going to go ahead and go over the AP Physics C Mechanics um, 2023 free response problem for, um, and number three, and this is from set uh, number one. What I would encourage you to do is go ahead and download this problem from the AP website, um, try it yourself, and then check back in on this video, and you can watch um, and then kind of see how you did on it. Okay, so after you've done that, let's go ahead and look at part A. So we want an expression for the angular speed of the rod just before striking the sphere. Okay, angular speed, I know that is going to be omega. So the rod goes down and then it hits this ball right here. Okay, but we want it again before it hits the sphere. So anytime things change speed, um, change heights, I love using energy conservation is always gonna be your best bet. So it's here, it's starting with gravitational potential energy. And right as it's about to, right before it hits the sphere, it is going to have, it's moving, but it's moving rotationally, so it's going to be Ke rotational. So UG initially is going to be equal to Ke rotational. So we know UG is going to be MGH. Um, Ke rotational is 1 half I omega squared. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So the mass of the rod, I'm just going to leave it as big M for now, GH is one half. The inertia of the rod is one third ML squared. And then we want to find omega. The height, so I'm going to look at the average position of the height, how much that changes. So that is going to be L over 2 for the height. So mg times L over 2 equals, this will just be, let's see, one half times one third ml squared, omega squared. Okay, so now we can just do a bunch of simplifying and solve for omega. So mass cancels out on both sides. We got a one half that cancels out. Um, one of the l's cancel out. So it looks like we're left with 3g divided by l is going to be equal to omega. And then take the square root. Okay, and for this problem, it is worth two points. You get one point for using conservation of energy, and then you get one point for correctly substituting in H. Um, so substituting in what H is, and then also for correctly substituting what I is. Okay, so now we want the speed of the sphere immediately after the collision. Anytime there's a collision, you know you're gonna use conservation of momentum. In this case, it's angular momentum since the rod is rotating. So the angular momentum of the rod is going to equal the angular momentum of the ball. So the angular momentum of the rod is going to be I omega. For the ball, we can treat that as a point mass, so we can use MBR. So I of the rod we know is one third ml squared, they told us. Omega, um, we can substitute in we what we just got is square root of 3g divided by L. 3g over L. Let's see, mass of the ball, let's be careful with our masses. Sometimes it's easy to lose track of what's what. So the ball is going to be m. Speed v naught, we're calling it v naught. R is the distance from where it is to the pivot point. So here it is to the pivot point. So that is going to be L. And then the last little thing we're going to need is the rod's mass is going to be 2 times the little m. So then this is one third times 2m L squared square root of 3g over L equals m v naught L. Okay, so now we can go ahead and do some simplifying. So let's see, an L cancels here, L cancels here, m here, m here. So then when this simplifies a little, it looks like it's two thirds L times square root of 3g divided by l equals v naught. We want to put, let's go ahead and just put it all under the radical just for fun. So then if we do that, it'll be 4g l over 3 equals v naught. Okay, and this is just worth two points right here. Um, one point for using conservation of angular momentum. And then you get one point for subs correctly substituting in omega from um, part A. Okay, 
So now we look at this. Okay, so the sphere begins rotating while sliding. So this is not perfect rolling motion. Um, and then it begins rolling without sliding at point D. So whenever it rolls without sliding, we know V equals omega R. Um, but that's not until it reaches point B. Okay, so, oh, fun. I love drawing a free body diagram. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our free body diagram for when it's between points A and B. So again, between points A and B is right here. So of course, you know, anything with mass, um, and make sure to draw at the point of the application. Anything with mass has to have force of gravity. So force of gravity going down. Um, and then we also have, there is a surface it's on. So the surface is pushing up um, Fn. And Fn and Fg should be the same in size. And Fn originates at the surface. OK, so it's spinning, moving that way. So then you need the torque to almost pull on it this way to create the torque. And what creates that torque is just going to be friction. OK, so this is worth two points. And you get one point for correctly drawing Fn and Fg. And then one point for drawing force of friction going to the right. OK, so now we want to find the linear velocity of the center of mass as a function of time t. OK, um, we're also probably going to want to find acceleration if we um, go ahead and do this. And for this section, um, it will accelerate constantly as it goes, since friction will just stay the same. So let's go ahead and set this up. So f net in x direction is just going to be equal to force of friction. And force of friction um, will point the opposite direction it moves. So we'll say negative graph f. So I'm going to say to the left of this direction, it's going to be our positive direction. So f net is always equal to m of a. Force of friction is negative mu fn. fn, I know, is just going to be mg. So I go ahead and simplify this, and I get acceleration to be negative mu g. So again, acceleration is constant, so I'm just going to use the constant acceleration equation. So vf is just going to be v. That's what we're solving for. Um, the initial is just v naught. Acceleration I just found to be negative mu g. Um, delta x I'm not going to need. And delta t as a function of time t means t is allowed in your answer. So I'll just put t here. OK, so when I look at this, it looks like a constant acceleration equation. Vf equals vi plus a times delta t. So now we can just substitute in. This is going to be v. This is going to be v naught plus negative mu g t. And we got our answer. OK, and this is going to be worth actually three points for this part. Um, one point for setting up f net in the x direction. One point for correctly getting the acceleration. And then one point for the correct velocity. Cool. And if you wanted to, you could also integrate your acceleration function um, to get your velocity function as well. OK, so now for the next part, we want to find angular velocity omega. So it's kind of like the analog to what we just did in part one. So instead of using f net equals ma, we are going to need to use t net equals i alpha. And even if you're not sure what to do, but you used f net equals ma in the previous one, write down t net equals i alpha. You'll usually get a point on that. So let's see. What force makes it rotate? Friction is the force that makes it rotate. So it's going to be ff times r. Let's go ahead and look up the i of this object. So the inertia of this object sphere is 2 fifths mr squared. So 2 fifths mr squared, and then we have alpha in here. Force of friction, we know, is just what we got from here. So that's going to be mu mg times r equals 2 fifths mr squared alpha. So let's go ahead and simplify everything. Um, and I was a little lazy, but it's the same mass we're talking about in each one. So mass cancels. Let's see, one of the r's cancel. Um, solve for alpha, so we get 5 mu um, g divided by 2r is going to be alpha. OK, so we can now ahead, go ahead and do the same thing, set up the angular constant acceleration equation. So omega f is what we want to find. I'm just calling that omega. Omega initial, it's not initially rotating when it gets there. Um, so, it's, so this is just going to be 0. And then alpha, we just found, is 5 mu g over 2r as a function of time t again. t is allowed in our answer. And we're not going to 
we need to change in theta. So let's go ahead and set this up. So omega f equals omega i plus alpha times change in t. So this is just omega equals what? 0 plus 5 mu g over 2rt. And that is just going to be our answer. Let's go ahead and write that down. 2rt. There you go. Okay. And this is also worth um, three points. So one point for writing down the equation t net equals i alpha. One point for correctly substituting in ff um, and then solving for alpha. And then one, you're going to get one point for substituting everything into a rotational constant acceleration equation and solving for omega. Okay, so now for the last part, derive an expression that, for the time it takes for the sphere to travel point A to point B in terms of all these things. Okay, so when, uh, so let's go ahead and look back at our picture. So from point A to point B. Okay, and point B is when slipping stops. And again, when slipping stops and it's just perfect rolling motion, V is going to be equal to our omega. So let's use this idea to help us. So when this occurs, V is going to be equal to R times omega. So we just found expressions for both V and omega. Let's go ahead and substitute those in. So V is V naught minus mu G T. That's a mu. Um, and then omega is going to be 5 halves mu g divided by r times t. Let's just make sure I wrote that down. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and simplify this. So let's see, the r's will cancel here. Um, so we'll get v naught minus mu g t equals, what is this over here? 5 halves mu g t. So let's move that other mu g t on the other side. So we got 5 halves mu g t plus mu g t. So this is going to be like 2 over 2 for this one. I'm just going to put in a 2 over 2 to the common denominator. So it's going to be 7 halves mu g t. And it looks like we want to solve for the time. So if we solve for t, it'll be 2 over 7 v naught divided by mu g is going to be equal to t. Great. Um, so now we just want to find, oh, let's see the point. So this is actually just worth two points for this one. And it is one point for indicating V equals R omega when slipping stops. And then you get one point for correctly substituting in V and omega from the previous part. Okay, so for this one, expression for the linear velocity upon reaching point V. Well, we know linear velocity we found was V equals V naught minus mu g t. We just went ahead and found our time, so let's just go ahead and substitute that in. So it's V naught minus mu g times, what is this, 2, 7, V naught over mu g. Okay, let's simplify this, so that cancels. So now we got V naught minus um, 2, 7, V naught. So this first one is going to be like 7 over 7, V naught. So that's just going to be, so that's like 7 over 7 if we do common denominator. So that's going to be 5 sevenths v naught for our answer. Okay. And this is actually just worth um, one point um, for correctly substituting in time from part i into um, this part right here. Okay, so now you can go ahead and see what your AP score would be. So if you add up all your points, you got between 9 to 15 total points according to the rubric, I'd approximate your AP score to be around 5. Let's say you got around 7 to 8 points. I'd approximate your AP score around 4. Around 5 to 6 points, I'd approximate your AP score to be a 3. You got around 4 points, AP score of a 2. And anywhere from 0 to 3 points, I'd approximate your AP score to be around 1. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great time um, chatting about physics. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.